You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring the scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello, welcome to Grammar Point. I'm Fred Long, and we're looking at the article in depth. And the, the article is a word that is many times translated as the, but, you know, to the consternation of beginning students, it's not always translated. Um, and so people are wondering, you know, why is there an article there? Shouldn't, shouldn't there be, if this is a literal translation, should, shouldn't the, the article be translated as the? Well, well, no, because it's a different language and there are rules or principles governing the use of the article. And uh, so these are just some things uh, that, that beginning students just have to struggle with. And uh, to I- explain the usage of the article, what we observe, there's been different people have articulated rules or canons or whatever. And so we're going to look at, in this episode, Caldwell's rule. E.C. Caldwell uh, was looking particularly at predicate nominatives. Now, uh, predicate nominative, remember, are, are when you have uh, a verb of being, like imi or yenome, and you have a subject, which is nominative case, and then you're saying, you know, that subject is or has become something else. So A is B. Uh, B would be the predicate nominative. And so sometimes that predicate nominative is anarthrous. That is, it has no article. And yet it's clearly something specific, uh, specifically known in the context. Um, so it's not a thing, but, you know, we know that it's something, you know, the son or the person or whatever it might be. So um, Caldwell began to articulate this rule that definite predicate nouns which precede the verb, so precede the verb of being, like imi, usually lack the article. They lack it. Um, And uh, cannot be translated as an indefinite or qualitative noun solely because the absence of the article. If the context suggests that the predicate is definite, definite, uh, it should be translated as a definite noun. Okay, so this is the rule, um, and this is this is the situation. So, what do we do with cases where the predicate nominative precedes the verb of being without the article? Uh, should we translate that as a or the? You know, is that entity, that person, that predicate nominative definite or not? And so, um, now Philip Harner uh, studied, found that in such cases of pre-verbal anarthrous predicate nominatives, that 80% of them were qualitative. In other words, stressing the essence or quality of what that noun signified. So in no way meaning like, a, you know, indefinite, something indefinite, unknown or indefinite, but rather stressing what that entity really is. So that's, that's significant. So let's, so here's, a, you can see the bibliography of Philip B. Harner. So, so Caldwell's rule, uh, it's, it goes back to a 1933 Journal of Biblical Literature uh, article. And then uh, Philip Harner's, Philip E. Harner's uh, article, uh, uh, 1973, uh, looking particularly at Mark 15, 39, and John 1, 1. So let's look at those verses. So Mark 15, 39 is, uh, says this, you know, so when the centurion is looking at Jesus and um, he says, so, um, and beholding, the centurion standing there uh, 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 noticed that that uh, as Jesus breathed his last, that as Jesus breathed his last, the centurion said, Aletos utos o anthropos, 
truly this person, Weos the you Ain, was a son of God, or was the son of God. Okay, so there we have it. Um, I'm doing some marking of the Greek text. So yeah, you have a lot of single underlining because you have a demonstrative pronoun, this person. So we're definitely looking at this person, uh, someone very specific. But then we notice that the huios the you, following Apollonius's canon, both are anarthris, and that it's preceding the verb of being, ain. It's preceding it. So it's coming before. And so the, the issue is whether this is, you know, a son of God or the son of God. So according to Caldwell's rule, um, this is in fact a, is definite. It's definite. This is a, a definite person, not a son of God, but the son of God. And probably if we're following Harner's understanding, uh, what he would consider, you know, 80% of these is that they are stressing, they're, they're stressing the quality of the word son. So not a son of God, but the son, like very son of God. Okay, so that's a look at uh, that example. If we go to John 1.1, 1, 1, we have uh, en arche, ein, o logos. So in the beginning was the word, ke, o logos, and the word, ein, was prostontheon, was with God. Uh, pros marking proximity, which is pretty cool to see. Was with God. So the word was with God and Theos ein o logos. Now, wait a minute here. We got Theos. So God was the word. So literally, and God was the word. Uh, the, the subject is uh, logos because it has the article. But then the predicate nominative, Theos, is anarthris. So what do we do with that? Is that a god? Is he a god? Or is he god in essence? Like god qualitatively, god in essence. And that's what we, we argue that it is. So the uh, predicate nominative precedes the verb of being and is not indefinite. That's the biggest point here, is that theos is not indefinite. A god. A god among other gods, but rather God in essence. Now, we could also look at John 14, uh, 114a, and we also see the, the principles at play here. We have, and the word, ke o logo sarx, uh, There we have the construction. So we have the subject, the logos is the subject, so o logos. Then we have the predicate nominative, sarx. And, and then we have the verb, ayenito. So the word became a flesh. Is a flesh, is that really the point? Is that, you know, a body? Or is the point flesh? And is that, is that being stressed? The qualitative nature of flesh. So incarnate. And I would argue, indeed, he became flesh in essence. Incarnate. So these are the rules. Uh, so when the predicate nominative precedes the verb of being, it's typically anarthrous. But that does not mean that it is uh, indefinite. And that's Caldwell's rule. Um, and these are look, we looked at some examples of that. All right. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Keep listening for other uh, episodes. We're going to end in the next episode or two by looking at Granville Sharp's rule. And it's a long rule, so we'll look at that in uh, you know, maybe two, three episodes. All right, take care. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glosahouse.com today. Glosa House, language resources for the global community.